Hey there, welcome to Audio Slang. My name is Marlon, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I like to export stems out of Ableton to ensure that your music is delivered exactly how you produced it. Let's jump right in, and I'll show you how it all works. All right, so just pulled up a random session here. Just something I most re recently worked on. Nothing too special, nothing too huge. Only, you know, maybe like uh, 15 tracks. Um, and let's say at this point, I'm either ready to send this to my mix engineer or I'm ready to send it to a friend uh, in order to collaborate with them on this specific track. Um, and let's say they don't have Ableton, so I have to give them the stems from beginning to end. Uh, what I'm going to do first is make sure that I have the area selected that I want to export. And I don't think this is as important um, in Ableton 10 since they added uh, a feature that I'm going to show you in a little bit, uh, which is rendering options include return and master effects. Um, it, previously in Ableton 9, they didn't have this option. So what you would have to do is something totally different. And if you are still an Ableton 9 user, I can show you um, the way that I used to have to do this in order to get all my stems out properly. But uh, since they've added this option, it's been become way easier. Uh, it makes my workflow a lot better. Um, so first thing, select the area just just to be sure, uh, you know, you're getting everything that you want to export. Um, next thing is naming your tracks. Make sure each of your tracks is named properly. You don't want to send stems to anybody without the proper name on them because they'll just be confused and it will take a longer time for them to get started because they don't know at what these things are actually. So it'll be called like, you know, audio one, MIDI one, things like that. You don't want it ever to be called that. You want it to be called exactly what it is in the track. All right. Next, if you're working with drum racks, I recommend that you go into each of your drum racks and just unless it's like hats, um, like a snares or kicks, I I definitely recommend that you uh, extract the chains and put them into separate tracks. So I'll just show you with one. You go into your drum rack, you you uh, select, you right click on one of the uh, samples, and then you press extract chains, and that chain will come out with its own MIDI on it. You could put it back in here and you could call it what whatever the track is called. So this one's called claps, right? So this is claps, right? Boom, done. And then you could do that for each of these rename them. I'm not going to do that right now, though. Um, all right. Next, uh, once you have everything named, I personally don't like the option to export all my tracks at once. I like to do them in individual groups. So what I'll do here is I'll select the group that I want to export. I'll hit Command Shift R, or you can go up to the file menu and go to export audio slash video. And this is where we'll start. So first option, if you're if you want to do all your individual tracks at the same time, go ahead. Um, the naming scheme will be a little uh, will just be basically the only the names of the tracks, but I like to put in front of the tracks what group they belong to, what, whether they're drums or bass. Um, I call my uh, anything that deals with chords a ha harmony track. Um, and so for me, I'm going to put selected tracks only. Um, the big option here is include return and master effects. Now, what this does here is it runs each individual track through your groups and then your master. If this isn't on, it's just going to take the audio from right from the track and nothing after that. And as a producer, you want everything to be exported exactly how you have it in your session, right? So you had a big kick and it might be because you had it in this drum bus with this boom option all the way up. Um, and if you exported it without this option on, it would just, it wouldn't have any of these effects on it. 
The big part is on my master, I actually have a glitch effect happening at a specific point in time. And that's another thing that wouldn't be on the track if I had not selected that option. So I'm gonna select these again, make sure selected tracks only is on, include return and master effects on. Boom, next, off, 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 off. Don't do any of this. Don't convert to mono unless you really want to, but I, I just say leave it alone, right? Um, sample rate is gonna be the sample rate at which you recorded. So like if you recorded vocals or something like that on the in, in uh, Ableton, I'd say leave this the sample rate alone. But if you didn't, just, you know, you could put it at four or eight. Um, I have it at four, four, one for some reason um, that I couldn't explain to you right now, but that's fine. Just leave that. Uh, next, encode PCM. Encode PCM is important because this means that your file is going to be uncompressed. So you have the most of, you know, most amount of data available per audio track. So I leave that on. It will extend the period that it takes to export your tracks, but I, I say it's totally worth it. You know, the more information we can give somebody, the better. Um, file type, wave. Uh, if you wanted, you can put FLAC, but FLAC is FLAC is compressed, so you wouldn't be able to encode it with PCM. Um, bit depth, 32, 32-bit. 32 I highly recommend that option unless you're going to be burning to a CD or releasing uh, your music um, just straight from here. And then dither option is going to be grayed out because there's no dither options with 32-bit. Um, and all the other options off if you want. Again, you don't want MP3s. You're not going to upload. Boom. We're done. We're going to hit export. We're going to select the area where we want to save these stems. So let's say I, I want to save it in my session. So this is the session right here. You found me broken. Um, I'm going to create a new folder called stems just to keep things nice and organized. And we're exporting drums here. I have all my drums tracks selected. So I could put drums and then dash and another space. And then this is good. This is what's going to be put in front of the name of the actual track. So it's going to be called drums dash verse kick drums dash chorus kick things like that. All right. Press save and let it render out. All right. Now that that's done. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but you can actually see which track is being exported at that period of time during your export process. Uh, you see that it kind of highlights the on off button on your track uh, when it's exporting that specifically. And this is on honestly how in Ableton Live 9 you would have to do it yourself. So if you are a Live 9 user um, and you want to get the same effect or same process, um, what we used to have to do is we would have to solo each individual track and export them separately from the master. So include return and master effects wasn't here. Encode PCM is also not there. Uh, we just get these new options now in Ableton 10. But in Ableton 9, you have to solo the track you want to export, render from the master, and then export your track as whatever you want to call it. Right? Wow. Okay. So we didn't actually get the tracks in the <laughs> place that we wanted it. Right. But that doesn't matter. Um, now we, uh, so you would have to do that for each individual track. Um, if, if you are in Ableton live nine, but thank God in 10, and I highly recommend you upgrade to 10. If you do have nine, there's just so many great features that are worth the upgrade. Um, all right. So now let's look at our stems here. I didn't select the folder which it was supposed to go in. I just created it, but let's just put them in there right now. And we can see it's called drums, dash, big clap, chorus kick, all, all of our tracks. Um, and then you just go through and do that for each individual group. Now, if you are lazy and you just want to do all individual tracks, that's fine. You could still hit this include include return and master effects. Um, the only thing is that now you're going to get your your 
groups as well. So you're going to have one that's just going to be called drums, which is a, a drum group um, or like bass or harmony or any. I, I don't I don't really want my groups in there. I'd rather just my individual tracks and groups be just an effect type thing, unless you produce a separate way where this is this is a track, right? A group is a track. I just you just have things layered in there and that's how you want to work. Um, and that's fine. You know, you you decide which way you're going to uh, export your tracks to make sure that the next person gets them exactly how you want them to get your tracks. Um, and I, I'd say, you know, give them the most room possible to make your idea better. Right. So that's why you send it to a mix engineer, because you like how they mix. And the more room you give them to mix the better a product it can be. If you're just sending them, hey, this is my drums, this is my bass with all your basses on it, and this is all my synths on one track, you know, that's going to be a, a terrible mixing session for them. So I'd say just go for the individual inner tracks from your groups and everything will be fine. Um, and that's it. And you should be good from there. You know, obviously you can zip it up however you want to send it to them. I'm not going to get into that. Um, I hope you guys learned something today and you guys took away something and uh next time i'm going to be explaining how to import sessions or import uh stems properly into ableton for mixing or for collaborating so make sure you stay tuned for that um you know hit that like button subscribe if you want to subscribe support us and uh, we'll see you next time thanks a lot